Devakar and this is Bharat here from HP. Um, so we don't have Kiran who has done some parts of this work or most part of this work. So we'll take the time to actually talk on his behalf and walk you through this. So if you, if you really look at this, um, we are trying to look at how OpenStack is actually having, what are the values that OpenStack has, and what are the values, um, can you move on? What are the values that uh, vSphere environment gives? We, for the sake of uh, simplicity, we have just highlighted few of these values which OpenStack gives you, and few of these values, and this is not exhaustive. So uh, the list actually has what, is, what, what does OpenStack mean, which could be seamless API interface, portability across different forms of clouds and all that, and an easy way of accessibility to, uh, and a seamless way of accessibility for any cloud user. And that's what OpenStack gives. And if you look at VMware, it basically uh, you know, gives you a lot of features and it's most proven inside the data center. It gives you a lot of functionality, which is elastic cloud and, most, and it's the most adopted one. It gives you things like DRS, uh, HA enablement, FT enabled VMs, FT enabled instances and lots like that. So our intent in this demo is to how to bring these two values together and see how one can leverage the other, okay? That's the intent of the demo, and uh, we have a certain set of blueprints which is implemented and waiting for submission to Havana, and uh, based on those constructs, we'll try and show you some samples of use cases which is actually using this model, and that will be our uh, main aim of looking at the use cases. So mainly here uh, we see that OpenStack is good today, and uh, vSphere uh, it's uh, good in in its uh, in its form. And uh, what we are trying to bring together and make it uh, better, and uh, we can have a better cloud uh, built on top of uh, this vSphere and uh, in the OpenStack. So, oops. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, in the interest of uh, the previous uh, discussion regarding uh, the intent of what, why we are trying to do this, uh, we have the uh, following uh, blueprints here, uh, which we are trying to uh, implement as part of this uh, Havana, and uh, these are the, some of the blueprints which we have put and we, which we have discussed in the design sessions. And um, I, I'll just uh, quickly go through uh, each one of them, and uh, I'll not take much time on uh, explaining each of them. So here, uh, main intent uh, here for, uh, for the first one is to have uh, uh, multiple uh, vCenters uh, managed through the uh, uh, managed through one compute, uh, including uh, multiple clusters and the resource pools. Uh, that is in the next one here. So the third one uh, is mainly about uh, vCenter compute driver and schedule announcements to publish the uh, cloud capacity, uh, uh, which is required uh, mainly when we implement. Uh, the, a compute uh, managing multiple clusters and uh, resource pools. Today, what, what happens uh, in, in the existing uh, VC driver, which is out there in, as part of the Grizzly, uh, uh, you can manage one cluster uh, using uh, one compute, and uh, the cluster is the capacity what it currently gives today is uh, mainly uh, is taking the first resource pool uh, first capacity pool. Uh, in the uh, default resource pool capacity and uh, this is uh, enhance, enhancing that uh, that uh, uh, feature. So the fourth one uh, here is uh, mainly related to uh, currently today uh, you need to have a glance image uh, wherein you will upload a, a VMDK image uh, to deploy an instance into the uh, vCenter or, or in the in the ESX. Uh, here uh, what we are talking about is uh, having a glance, uh, having a VMware template to be used as an image uh, and. Uh, use the uh, glance as only the metadata repository wherein you can just uh, uh, maintain the metadata of the uh, template that you have available in the uh, vCenter and when you do the actual scheduling uh, have the vc uh, driver that we write will take care of, to take care of the uh, taking the uh, template to deploy the images uh, uh, deploy the new instance onto the uh, esx server so the next one is uh, 
So here uh, we, are, we are talking about the compute driver enhancements to support our uh, the, uh, HP Cinder 3 part driver. Uh, mainly here uh, we are talking about uh, having a Cinder volume uh, which is carved out uh, from uh, HP uh, 3 part array and uh, providing the support for attaching that uh, 3 part uh, volume into an instance. So, so it, it's not fiber only, yeah, it's a fiber channel yeah. support. And the second thing is, uh, in this whole model, we have actually, the OpenStack compute is modeled as a vCenter cluster. So vCenter cluster has multiple hosts, and the visibility to the volume needs, not, needs to be set not to the only host, which is usually the KVM model, but needs to be set to all the hosts in the cluster so that a VM which is live migratable within the cluster, whether it's a data disk or the boot disk, should be able to move. And that's one of the features which is needed because it needs, the target needs to be cluster aware and it should have the visibility. Okay, so that's the other part which is also changed. No, no, in this model, we are not trying to do it through vCenter. It's, it's provisioned through OpenStack, and every API is done through Nova, and the, the driver which is actually talking to vCenter, which is the vCenter driver, will proxy it and do all the work which is needed. And while it does that, uh, from Nova, so this, this is about getting the best of both worlds, and one of the world is OpenStack, and you create a VM, and then how do you stitch the, uh, you know, the data disk through Cinder to a VM which is actually stitched through OpenStack and using a vCenter driver and matching these two. It's the best of both worlds marriage. And in this part, the only thing which we are uh, in Cinder, Cinder basically tries to do a host model with multi-initiators, it's also possible. But in this particular case, it's all about setting the visibility for all the hosts which are there in the cluster. And that's the, it's the volume share for all, across all the hosts. Uh, the Cinder driver is also done for FC, and uh, it's a it's a data structure change, and that blueprint is also submitted. There is, this is the Nova blueprint. There is also a Cinder blueprint, which was also submitted and it is approved. So, uh, if if we can fo follow through and wait for the questions, that'll be great because uh, you know I, if I run out of time, then you you would not see the demo. So we'll go fast and then finish, and probably take about 10-15 minutes for the questions. Yeah, uh, yes. and the last one uh, here is uh, uh, we have a, a health and mon module which is introduced uh, into the OpenStack and which is currently in StackForge. Uh, uh, we are uh, trying to uh, get the uh, data out of uh, the uh, uh, ESX uh, servers uh, into this health and mon, and we will show uh, what is available as part of this health and mon. So uh, it, when we consider the uh, current uh, Grizzly model of uh, either uh, the ESX or the uh, managing the uh, ESX server through the uh, cluster. So this is a model what we see. If you take a, a KVM host, uh, you will land a compute uh, into a KVM host and uh, th that will reflect into a compute uh, entry into the compute node table and you will have uh, a queue which is created for compute one, wherein whenever a request goes into the queue, automatically that is uh, uh, served by this uh, compute here. So similar to that one, when you have n number of computes, you will end up with the n number of entries uh, into the computes, and you will see the uh, n, n number of computes. So. When we compare uh, the same uh, with the vSphere, uh, vCenter driver which is existing in Grizzly, so you are modeling the uh, cluster as a compute. So for each of the computes, you will see the entry in the compute table. So this is what is currently available. And uh, Nova Scheduler, uh, it uses the uh, queue which is created to pass on the request to a particular compute, and that's how uh, it gets the instance created on a particular inst uh, compute. So when we compare that uh, with the Nova proxy uh, compute driver that what, what we are pro proposing, here there will not be any change in the KVM driver. So here we are talking about uh, having a proxy compute which, is, which can be deployed either in a, in a VM or it can be in a physical server, anywhere you, you would like, you can have that one, uh, which can manage a number of clusters, it can be a uh, number of clusters, resource pools are uh, grouped together. 
So uh, when we are, getting, we are uh, having one compute managing uh, n number of uh, clusters, resource pools, and we give, a, we give a feeling that, okay, you have n number of computes, so that uh, you will not uh, have any, uh, you, you don't have to enhance any other stuff, which is available, all the features which are available as part of Nova, and it will, it will continue to work uh, as, is, uh, the, as is today. Uh, We'll see how what we mean by that. So all the requests will go to this uh, queue. So Nova Scheduler uh, it uses that queue to uh, if uh, any provisioning this that needs to be done to this particular uh, cluster. So uh, here, but I think you want to talk. You can come. Okay. Uh, here where we are talking about. Uh, HP uh, three power center volume attached for an uh, instance which is already existing in a in a cluster. So uh, what what we are doing here is uh, there are there are two parts uh, uh, to to this story here. Uh, one is the change that we need to implement as part of the uh, cinder, wherein uh, a request uh, to attach a volume uh, to a compute that goes into the uh, compute, and that will be forwarded to the uh, cinder. To create the volume, and as part of this one, in the storage array, it will create that uh, volume. And when it returns, uh, the when when Cinder uh, returns the today uh, in Cinder, uh, what uh, what it returns is uh, only a name value pair uh, that uh, of the WWN of the uh, storage uh, or the volume that is uh, created, and it presents it to the particular host. But in this case, what we need is uh, we are, since we are managing a cluster, we need that. Um, volume to be presented across all the hosts in the cluster. So that's where the change what we are doing here is uh, we are getting a list of uh, uh, WWNs and WPNs uh, for uh, hosts and accordingly uh, all the uh, hosts will see the, uh, will have the visibility to that uh, volume and it gets attached to a particular uh, instance. So, so the, the, the forward, forward, uh, the step two also passes all the uh, initiators from the host. So Cinder needs to know what are all the initiators which are there in the host, and you first give Cinder saying that these are all the hosts to which you need to present this target to, and post presenting those target, it actually gives those results of what what how it presented, and then you go do a rescan on the first. Uh, today it just does the first one, and there are ways and means where we can improve things and picking and choosing which path, what we want to do, all that. But basically, this is. This is about co collaborating for a cluster and actually making all of the, the targets volumes to be visible on all the uh, you know, basic uh, hosts within the cluster. So uh, we, we, with that one, uh, we are going to talk about uh, a demo wherein we will show some of the use cases that are possible uh, with the implementation that we have with the uh, managing multiple clusters and uh, resource pools. So our demo setup would be uh, something like this. So you have an uh, OpenStack controller. So uh, we have uh, two uh, vCenters, vCenter 1, A, A and uh, B, where you have uh, a cluster have a high, cluster called cluster high availability and cluster FC attach. So uh, we are going to use these uh, clusters uh, to depict uh, the use cases that we're talking about. So you have another cluster, tenant 1 where you have a uh, resource pool and resource pool two. Uh, you, you have an array here. So you have these uh, two uh, proxies which are managing the, uh, uh, this vCenter proxy A, it's managing the cluster clusters which are available as part of this uh, vCenter A and vCenter proxy B which is managing virtual center B. So you have the, uh, we, I, I initially talked about the Heltemon uh, uh, component and that this is the word proxy which gets deployed onto this uh, node here which manages the vCenter A and vCenter B. And so uh, we, will, we will drill down into the uh, use case uh, one, wherein uh, we are trying to pr uh, provision a uh, highly available VM as part of uh, which is uh, as part of the cluster, which is uh, where uh, you have enabled uh, DRS and HA uh, for the cluster. So, 
if you focus on uh, this particular cluster, which is managed by this vCenter proxy A, you, you have a, a compute, HA compute over here, and you have a flavor, which is uh, made available for HA, and you have an HA image. So the request uh, goes from the controller to the uh, compute, which is the vCenter proxy here. So that request is get, uh, gets forwarded to this uh, vCenter, and we use the VISDKs to uh, make calls to remote calls to the vCenter. So that in turn uh, creates the VM, which is a highly available uh, VM. Uh, now you can see that uh, there are two clusters here, and uh, as per since the uh, flavor that we have is selected is HA, and uh, image what we selected is HA image. So because of the affinity, it, it goes into this uh, cluster high availability. Uh, it's, it's just an image. No, uh, that's but, the name. Uh, there, here, just the name of the image. That's okay. all. Uh, so there is also a, a metadata which is trying to say that this particular cluster, this particular compute, is aggregated and it's actually a HA-enabled setup. Okay. So, uh, so you are trying and taking the VMware values, which it could be FT-enabled VM, it's a HA-enabled VM, any of those. And these are things which OpenStack doesn't understand, but you have tagged it in such a way that this, this particular cluster is actually tagged as a HA compute, and the names are said that way so that you know we are meaning it in words. And it's a HA compute, and it's actually aggregated with a HA uh, you know, uh, host aggregate, which is actually a HA aggregate. And then the flavor defines that if, if HA is true, then provision onto this, and that's how the scheduler understands all of this and provisions onto that. And in this, all of this, you have only meta tag the uh, you know flavors and stuff like that, and the native OpenStack kind of prefer, you know provisions onto the HA enabled VM. That's the basis of actually having the values of VMware, you know, using it in the co in the context of OpenStack, and all you have done is few tags. Yeah. So likewise, uh, any number of VMs that can be uh, provisioned into this cluster. So the next use case uh, here is about uh, provisioning a highly available instance with the FC volume attached. We, we talked about the attaching uh, a Cinder volume uh, to an instance. So how that happens uh, with the uh, vCenter proxy here. So you, you have uh, an image over here. Uh, you have a, a host aggregate called the 3PAR FC, which is created uh, in, the, uh, in the controller. You have the 3PAR FC tiny as the flavor type, and there is a FC compute, which is uh, basically representing this particular cluster, which is managed by the uh, vCenter proxy driver here. And uh, at the same time, uh, we are showing another uh, functionality here where you have a VM template, uh, which is uh, a uh, an image which is out there on this vCenter, which will use it uh, for deploying the new instance. So uh, the request uh, here, uh, it goes to uh, array to create a volume, like I said, I told you about uh, how it starts with uh, uh, sending a message to the array to create the volume. So that volume gets presented to the host through the cinder. And the request uh, here uh, goes from controller to the proxy, drive proxy. From the proxy, it gets to the cluster uh, here through the vCenter. And, and it uses the VM uh, template, which creates the VM and attaches the volume. So we, we, will, we will show this uh, demo uh, as part of the demo. And the interesting thing is, if one host goes down and the VM migrates, it you will see that within that cluster, all the, any VM which is actually yeah. as the VM migrates, you will have the visibility to the uh, Cinder. Yeah, uh, so since, since, since uh, uh, th this is a uh, highly available uh, cluster, so if the host C goes down and uh, when, as part of that uh, DRS and HA configuration, it will move the VM uh, to the host B. So even at that time, you will have this uh, data disk which you attached as a Cinder volume there. It, it will be still be available because of the uh, enhancements that we are doing where you can uh, see the visibility of that volume across the host. 
Okay, two questions. Yes, that, that's correct. That's true. That's correct, yeah. It's still within the compute called F F FC compute, and to its knowledge, it's in FC compute, and it's within the FC compute, the live migration, or whichever migration happened. Uh, the interesting thing is, if, this, uh, uh, if the cinder volume was not presented this way, the migration couldn't have happened because uh, it's not visible, that the data disk part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, V Center would not even allow the migration, and it would get stopped there. It's not a destructive model, but uh, for it to really perform, that's where this enablement gets the VM to live migrate and all of that, and so that the VM is still having the data disk visible to it. So uh, moving so hold, on, there was one more question. So the network part today is uh, pre-configured, so that's how it goes. Okay, so that's a part which we need to answer, and um, probably Sean, who is sitting here, will see some answers in the you know time coming soon, and that's where the vCenter one uh, network is unsolved mystery for now. It's pre-carved, and uh, hope that works. And you will not have to stay that uh, with that model for too long. I hope. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, for now it's answer which is it's pre-carved. Okay. So no what? No. Uh, that's a at least for the V center driver. That's the truth. Let's be clear on that. Okay. So the other use case is possible uh, with this one is uh, tenant based uh, provisioning where you can set the affinity to a particular cluster or a resource pool where you want to say, allocate one resource pool to a tenant and uh, you always want that. Uh, uh, new instance to be created in that particular uh, uh, resource pool. So this is the setup of what we have. Let's concentrate on this cluster A here, where you have RP1 and RP2. These are the resource two resource pools which are out there in the cluster tenant, and you also have a highly available cluster. So what, what we are trying to do here is uh, we have created a host aggregate called uh, tenant1, where we will set the affinity to go into, and whenever you create a new instance, to go into this uh, resource pool one or resource pool two uh, by the host aggregate uh, set uh, metadata that you will set here. So the again, uh, the, this uh, request goes to the proxy and from the proxy it goes to the vCenter. You have a tenant one template. That's how uh, you link this uh, host aggregate uh, when, when the scheduler, uh, it picks up the number of hosts, it goes to the host aggregate, and uh, from the host aggregate, it will pick up, okay, I have, uh, I, uh, it has a metadata to say, okay, uh, looking for a highly uh, available uh, cluster uh, with a resource pool uh, one. So that's where uh, the VM ends in this uh, resource pool one. Similar to that, uh, it will deploy the resource onto resource pool two. Yeah. Yeah, single VM template. Single VM, yeah. vCenter based template, single VM. So uh, f finally, uh, we, we need, uh, whenever uh, we configure and uh, deploy some of the uh, instances, we need to have a more monitoring, and uh, this is the monitoring solution we have, uh, where uh, uh, we have the component called HelpMon, which, uh, which manages the clusters. Uh, it manages the clusters. It manages the resource pool available there. So uh, as of today, uh, you would have seen that uh, from the OpenStack construct, we have open open uh, uh, OpenStack uh, compute and uh, instances. Uh, here we, we get the underlying details about uh, the cluster and the resource pools. All the way up to the physical. All the way up to the physical uh, layer. And also it manages the VMs. So uh, we'll, with that one, uh, we'll move on to the uh, demo part of the session. So here, uh, we are trying to deploy a new instance into a 
highly available uh, cluster. So you launch an instance. You select a uh, image. So we be sure that uh, we have a high label uh, image there and a flavor type. So this is the pre-carved uh, network that we have. Yes, yes. Mm. I'm sorry? Uh, no, we directly created uh, it on the uh, horizon. So, what guest customization? No, not yet. No. So uh, here, uh, okay, we just launched this uh, highly available uh, VM. So here we are trying to uh, power on that uh, VM. So this uh, uh, cl cluster uh, which is available here, it's a fully automated uh, cluster and which is uh, a DRS and HA enabled cluster. No, uh, we, no we, uh, just for uh, showing you the that it is highly available cluster and the properties out here, we are uh, showing the vCenter, otherwise you don't. So it's more for a demo sake yeah. that it's hap really happening and uh, the proof is actually what you see, right? <laughs> so that's the reason why you're showing it. Well, I could always say that that's all happened, but where's the proof? That's the... So you see that uh, this uh, IP address is assigned when we, uh, we started this uh, VM. So it's still pinging. So you log in, log into this uh, VM and uh, show the IP address uh, which is assigned to this VM. So this is like the add a whole new set of wrappers to the ID address. So what's the actual value of that? So is this that easy? If you try to control the, the VM using the uh, VM like the only key, for example, then. So why do you have this if you want to go to the open set or power up? I'm not able to get Sorry, I, I, I could not get your question. So why are you asking what's the value add in the open set and that's true and the peers already know the real title of the peers and that's true. So why, yeah, so here it's like you're doing this is a polygon, so this is actually maybe our system DSS for a cluster. Right? Yeah. 
ma ma mainly what we are uh, what we are doing with uh, by bringing in this uh, functionality into the OpenStack is we are doing the cloud enablement of the same features that you would have seen in the vCenter and uh, make it available as part of OpenStack where you will get the benefits of the cloud. That's, no, we are not. We are these not. are. This is one way of working. Let's let's put it that way. So, if 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 in a brownfield somebody wants to try out, uh, they already have their VMs and they want to try out a cloud. That's the way we should talk of it. Yes. No, you, you, sh you should be able to. Okay, I'll move, move on to the uh, next uh, demo wherein uh, we show the FC attach uh, volume to an, an instance. Here you are selecting the uh, volume here. So you do a volume attached to that instance. So it started the job. So you can see that it's uh, attaching that volume to the instance which is created. So this volume just generates our margin? Yeah. On the fly, it uh, creates that volume on the... Create. Yeah. 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 Already it's presented to that host and it's available there. Yes. Yes. So yes. when you rescan, when you pick the right host and then rescan, that's there. Today it picks the first one, so we can do better than turn, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could go beyond that. So, see, the demo is good, but it picks the first one which is written, okay? So, uh, the way it, it does it in the vCenter is the reconfigure that virtual machine to attach that uh, another uh, disk, which is, uh, it attaches that volume as an RDM volume. That's, that's uh, so when you give a cluster, at least the current thinking is when you give a cluster to uh, OpenStack, you don't mess with it, okay? So that's the model. Uh, I hope, Sean, you want to say something about it? It's, it's about which chunk are you giving it for OpenStack. That's all this the difference. Are you assuming there's no RAM in the end, or nobody will? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't do an import. At least, at least for today, there is no import. Outside of, yeah. outside of the OpenStack. Yes. Everything is driven through OpenStack, and it is initiated from OpenStack and provisioned. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah, the next part of the demo is uh, to uh, see how we can use a template to deploy a new instance through OpenStack. So uh, here uh, there is an image, uh, which, uh, this is the image metadata which is available as part of uh, Glance and this is coming out of the Im uh, VM template which is available in the vCenter here. Glance. Yes. Yeah, image metadata is available in Glance and uh, uh, when you do NOVA uh, uh, image show, uh, you, you see that uh, there is a metadata which is added as a image property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you launch an uh, instance, you will just uh, choose the image uh, just like that. Uh, you will choose uh, for a default uh, image uh, launch. It's possible, but not done today. It's not reconfigured. It's not, uh, you know. Yes, yeah. we we can always do it. So it's not that uh, it's impossible, but today it's more of a template provisioning. Yeah. So you can see that uh, it has started the deploying that uh, new instance from the template. So that's about the deployment of the new VM. What? H enabled VMs? Mm -hmm. uh, not that I'm aware of. And we are here we are taking the capabilities of uh, what vCenter supports and it's H enabled VM. So we will quickly move on to uh, the next uh, demo. Uh, it should be the last one. So uh, here uh, we are talking about this uh, health and mod module which collects the inventory data as well as the usage and the alert uh, alerting data from for the ESX driver here. So uh, you can see the uh, clusters, resource pools, VM hosts, instances, network, storage, and all the uh, inventory uh, stuff that we collected from the ESX driver. So th this is the uh, VM host uh, data that we have uh, for a, a KVM. And similar to that, uh, we have the information for ESX uh, VM host cluster and resource pool as well. No, uh, the, the, uh, currently uh, we have this uh, created code. only for the demo and uh, we don't have it uh, like a, a production quality uh, code. Yeah, it's an API, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the best way of showing a demo, so it's more for the demo. Okay. Stop it, we are done with time. So uh, here, uh, drill down into the cluster. This is the inventory data that we are uh, showing for a cluster. 
And similar to that, uh, we have the data for resource pool, VM host, the uh, instances, network storage. And uh, we have the alerting data as well. OK. So we are pretty much run out of time. And uh, you know, so. We'll surely post it. Uh, give us a couple of days. We'll post it, and it should be there. OK? Huh? Until we get back to India, or uh, you know, the flight takes us there. So <laughs> that's the best. If, if there is a flight delay, if you have an earthquake, don't blame it on us, <laughs> OK? So that's pretty much, that's a couple of days, OK? It's all about the airline industry and nothing to do with us. OK? That's great. Thank you. Thank you.